hello and bonjour and welcome to Maisha France. My name is Maggie. Uh, today we are in Medoc and we are meeting this Franco Kenyan couple that is going to be telling us about their business in butcheries. So, how did a Kenyan like you end up in Medoc, which is really not really just next to you know the biggest of cities? Exactly, it's uh, following your love. <laughs> I followed my husband because this is where he has his home, yes. of which it was considered as a summer home. Mm -hmm. So we, when used to, we used to live in Dubai, so summertime we used to come to this house. It wasn't big, but since it is next to the sea, that's how I came to fall in love with this place. It's a lovely place. It's beautiful, especially during summer. Yes. You have no idea. No, it's really beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> yes. So that's how I ended up here. Mary. Mlikutana wapi na David kwa sababu nimesikia kiongea mambo ya Dubai. Mimi tena medoka hapa tuko. Mimi hata sijui mlikutana wapi. Naweza kutuambia maybe you never know it's Tulikutana nice tulikutana 2003 and it was in Saudi Arabia. Oh you are globe trotter. <laughs> I'm a daring person. Yes. So I went to Saudi Arabia looking for green pastures as mm -hmm. most of girls do in Kenya. Right. I ended up in Riyadh. And in Riyadh, that's where I was working, and that's where I met my husband. Oh, because he was working there. He was at the working, same time. yeah. He was working there at the same time. So you've moved to different uh, countries. Yeah, yeah. We moved later on. We moved because he was dealing with the big supermarkets. So every year he was moving to go and open another one. So every time I used to move with him. Yes. We went back to Kenya on 2006, yes. and we did our wedding there. And then we, yeah, thank you. Then we went to Bahrain, and uh, I had two kids with my first uh, Kenyan husband, right. my ex. Yeah, so we I moved to Bahrain with my kids, and uh, that's where now again we stayed for one year. One year again we moved to Kuwait. Yes. In Kuwait we stayed there for two years. Two years. That's when I got my third born. Oh, you have three. That is, I have children. three beautiful have children. Exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah. Beautiful family. Exactly. Family. Thank you. Thank yes, you so much. Yes. Yeah. And uh, after we stayed in Kuwait for two years, then we moved to Dubai. Now in Dubai is where now we stayed a little bit, but since I didn't speak French, neither my two other kids. Right. We decided to move to France for two years to learn the language. Nyumbani, kwa mze. Kwa mze sasa. <laughs> and you've learned French? Of yeah, course, we... And the children as well. Exactly. Just and they see. joined schools here, so it was easy after we moved back to Dubai. It's a beautiful story. Yeah, it's a, it's a long story also. <laughs> For another day. Exactly. <laughs> uh, since you are Kenya, sometimes, Mary, tunasikia saa ingine tunamis nyumbani. Are you ever homesick sometimes? I am just like... Any other Kenyan, yes, mm -hmm. yes. But I usually try my best to go once a year okay. to Kenya. And um, here, because of us now being so busy, yes. I don't, I think being homesick, it's less now than years back, whereby I could think too much about life back home and everything. But at the moment I wake up in the morning, I have a very long schedule. So I don't have time to think too much about Kenya. You are busy and then... You are busy with the busy life. But yes. I do miss Kenya. Sometimes even I've come to... I cook when I miss Kenya too much, I cook Kenyan meal. And my kids love it. Oh yes, and I imagine also it's easy now to communicate from home. You exactly, with this. WhatsApp. So yes. what I usually do, it's like, I can call my mother three times a day. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Then homesick, <laughs> homesick Nikidogo. it's Nikidogo. It's not like before, whereby we used to call once a month. I remember. Exactly, it was so difficult. It was. But now it's so, it's like I see her all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, tell us, why did you decide to start the business in butcheries? Because we are not here for the wine, we are here about your business. Um, it all started with him. <laughs> It all started with him because yes. I'm not a butcher. I've never dealt with meat, it's only eating. Good. But uh, thinking of selling, it's something that I never thought of. But he's the one who's, who told me that we can start the business. So why David? Why did you choose so this? When, when we come from Dubai, I know there was a, 
Uh, to come back here, uh, I was I, first we have a family house here, so that's why we decided to come back here. Uh, it will become our house. And uh, second thing, we like the region. Then, butchery was my first uh, job. Uh, with uh, where I was working in uh, Dubai, I started as a butcher, but after I grew. And uh, we decided, because I have seen still there was a need and people like meat, especially in this area. So I decided to, to go on, uh, to go back to my first job. And I think uh, now we're having two butcheries, so I believe it's, it was the right choice to do now since the last uh, five years. Fantastic. I speak a little bit of uh, Swahili, Kidogo, Kidogo, uh, like uh, Sasa, Poa, all this. So and, but I have a problem in the butchery if I if I build myself in a, in a beach, build a butchery in uh, Kenya because I'm having a problem between uh, I mix the world between Yamba and Yama. <laughs> <laughs> so this maybe be, be, will be a little bit complicated. But I'm there. I'm there to help him. So sometimes you know, if you say Nyama or Nyamba, somebody will understand. It is. <laughs> It's not a big deal anyway. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> the the they, they all accompany each other. Definitely. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the French people, what, what type of meat do they really like? Um, I will say there is something we call Cote de Boeuf. That is something that we sell a lot. Okay, so and that's your best yeah, sale? Yes. yeah, it's our best sales. And then uh, there is something Kunakituku. We, in Kenya, we are used to eat mutura, mm -hmm. but the mutura here is not the same as the one back home. Yes. And it's something I'm trying, maybe one day I will come to do the, the original mutura of Kenya. Yes. And uh, here they usually call it Buddha, and it also moves a lot. We, we fabricate some, and some we buy from the, some furniture. So you can say it's mainly red meat? Yeah, red meat. Yeah. Okay, since yeah. you are Kenya, you are Nyamachoma. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, are they the same like us? Yes. Especially when the weather is a bit uh, like today, there is a bit of sun. That's when we sell a lot of uh, Nyamachomas. But for us, we don't choma. It's we give it to the, they we sell raw meat and they go to to choma for themselves. Wanajichomea? Yeah, wanajichomea, exactly. Okay, fine. Uh, so in, uh, in your butcheries, we heard you have two? Yes. Uh, usually, uh, do you have like um, prepared dishes that you sell directly? Yes, okay. Or do you deliver? Yeah, what we do, like uh, the seasonal one, we usually make a lot of skewers. In French, they call it brochette. Brochette, Yeah, yes. and we make a lot of that because it's it's made with, uh, we have capsicum that we mix with the meat mm -hmm. and we do different kind of meat. That is if it's pork, beef, and then uh, chicken. So people usually come and take it to go and do the barbecue direct because it's already also marinated. Okay. We deliver a lot because uh, sometimes we are having some orders from school that is around because you know here in France, kids usually eat lunch in school. So we usually have a lot of meat that the school will ask for the preparation so we usually that one will go raw and it's them to prepare but when it comes to like our maison retraite old people's home yeah yes. old, the old people's home yeah, exactly so there also we usually deliver and uh, this time we were shocked that the capacity was too big and we are happy for that then you know this region is um, having a lot of uh, castles that is the wine wine yards and everything. Mm -hmm. So there also we do delivery. Yeah, so delivery we, we do a lot. We have a truck and we have a cold truck that is having refrigerator that is having refrigerator. Yes, and to keep it yeah cold, to keep it cold keep it before fresh. it reaches to yes. the consumer. Because I imagine in summer it's very hot. It's very, very hot, yeah. For, for the transport. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so, and uh, so you have employees? Yeah, we do have employees. Uh, this year, because it's the first time we got the two butcheries, we had around 16 employees. Amazing. Yeah. So it, it went very well and uh, everything, everything went good as planned. Oh, that's great. Yeah, exactly, yeah.
So maybe uh, when we're in Kenya, mm -hmm. so according to you, do you think it's easier to, you know, to run this kind of business in, for example, in Nakuru, or is it easier in Bordeaux? I will say, in um, in Nakuru it's okay, but the way butcheries are run in Kenya, it's not the same the way they are run in in uh, in France, because. Um, in Kenya, like, okay, next to my place in Nakuru, we don't use, there is no fridge. It's just the nyama hanging and then you just get your piece and then you're gone. Here, everything has to be under three degrees yes. so that the meat, it, is, it, it, it reaches the customer. Okay. And when the customer is coming to choose, they get the meat on the display. It's not the same as Kenya. But... Everywhere have challenges. <laughs> when they deliver meat, they deliver, they deliver meat, especially during summer, around five o'clock in the morning. Really? Yeah, because you know there is a lot of uh, traffic and the drivers, they don't want to be stuck on the traffic. And then for us to be able to prepare for the day, we have to get it earlier before the clients. The butchery is usually opened at seven o'clock in the morning. So it's not a business for lazy people, we can say that. Not, not at all, not at all. You need to be well prepared mentally, because especially we are waking up in the morning early, and to finish, we are not finishing early, we are right. finishing late also. So psychologically you have to be prepared for what's coming. And with lots of energy. Exactly, with right. lots of energy. Right. Sometimes even we forget to eat which I find it's not good. To that point. Yeah, to that point, especially during summer. During summer is when we are having a lot of rush. Uh, last word from you, Mary. Would you like to tell us something before we end the video? Anything? Oh, yes. I would, I would like to say something. A lot of people in Kenya, or many Kenyans, are usually scared to, to start something, especially those who are in a diaspora. Yes. Like, you, you are not sure, should I start or not? Me, what I usually do is I dip myself into it. Whether it will come out good or bad, I will see when I am there. Yes. But I usually don't like to put one foot and then the other one is outside. So I dared to be with my husband in the butchery and we didn't know how the outcome will be. And here we are and we are very happy with it. So don't be scared to start something. Fantastic. Exactly. Uh, so Mary and David, I want to take this opportunity to thank you very much for having us, for hosting us in your beautiful home with your lovely family. And uh, thank you very much and I hope sometime soon you'll be coming to Exxon Provence where you can stay with us also and we show you around our beautiful city as well. Thank you very much. Asante sana. You're welcome and we are so happy to have you too. And maybe when we, you, we come to your place, Expo Provence, we can maybe think of a butchery there too. <laughs> we never know. <laughs> nothing is stopping Mary. Eh? Exactly, <laughs> nothing is stopping me. I'm not turning around. Yes. I'm just good. heading forward. Very good. Very exactly. Good, very, very good. <laughs> So that was Mary and David Ortega from Medoc with the experience of the butcheries. Till next time, this is Maggie from Maisha France. Bye for now. <laughs>